Welcome to CRE Modeling Success, uh, where the focus of this channel will be on commercial real estate financial modeling, uh, specifically for retail, office, and industrial properties, and more specifically, um, using Argus Enterprise modeling software. Uh, Argus is pretty much the industry standard in the commercial real estate world um, when modeling these properties, uh, specifically because of its functionality um, with complicated things to model like expense reimbursements for, for tenants and things like that. Um, not so commonly used with multifamily, um, but still possible. But uh, for the focus of this video series, it will be on retail, office, and industrial properties. Um, so with that, uh, with this video, I wanted to go ahead and uh, get started and just kind of show um, basically building a property in Argus from scratch. Um, if you are on the brokerage side of a commercial real estate transaction or looking to get a job on the brokerage side, um, you will quite often be creating Argus properties from scratch. Um, you'll usually get a uh, set of financials and other property information from the owner who you'll be listing the property for. And from that information, you'll go ahead and you'll build out an Argus property from scratch. Um, on the flip side, if you're on the uh, principal side or the acquisition side of the transaction, um, most of the time you'll get an Argus file in a uh, brokerage package from a broker. Um, and most of the time you'll go into that Argus file and uh, you'll change a lot of the assumptions and um, a lot of the inputs within that file to match um, your uh, acquisition criteria. Um, so you'll really need to know just as well as uh, someone that's creating the, the property, you'll need to know how all those inputs affect cash flows and everything like that uh, just as well. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and get started in creating a new property. So when creating a new property in Argus, uh, when you open up the software, and I have Argus Enterprise 12.0 in front of me here. Um, this is what it'll look like uh, when you open up the, the software. Um, so this is the home tab uh, to get started with building a new property or accessing any of your other properties or anything like that. You're going to go to the file tab up here in the top left hand corner. Um, and for our purposes here to create a new property, um, we're going to go and we're going to create a new portfolio. Um, from this screen here, um, you'll have access to uh, your different portfolios um, and then within those portfolios, uh, different properties. Um, so typically when you're working on a, a set of properties or, or um, you know, creating a new set of properties or something like that, this kind of just gives you a, a way to organize them and then the properties would be the subsets within those organized folders. Um, so we'll go ahead here and we will create a new portfolio. We will name it Portfolio123. Okay. Okay, so we've created our new portfolio. Uh, from here, we're going to create a new property. So we'll go up here to add property and create property from scratch. Uh, give you several different types of properties um, to model. Um, for this video, we will go with office. Next, uh, so we will name it property one. Um, and this page right here, uh, this dialog box will give you uh, basically just the, uh, the basic characteristics of the property. Um, in, and also some uh, time frame metrics in terms of the analysis. Um, so this one's usually pretty crucial. Uh, the analysis begin date, uh, for right now we'll just do it as this month. Uh, typically when you're looking at acquiring a property or, or building a property to list, um, you'll usually do that date a few months out uh, to account for the downtime in terms of, um, you know, if you're on the acquisition side, the downtime of uh, due diligence and escrow and everything like that. Um, so for right now, we'll just do it for this month. 
um, analysis years, a 10 year analysis that'll give us a good clear picture of the cash flows um, from today, 10 years into the future. Um, so, and then uh, just some, filling in some details about the property. Um, this one for our sake will be at 123 Main Street. New York, New York. Okay, so we'll create the property. Okay, so here we have our property created. Um, we have a few more uh, dialogue boxes here where we can fill out some details about the property, so we'll do that now. Um, the main one being the square footage, so we'll enter, enter the total square footage. We'll say it is 20,000 square feet. Um, and here, or here's where we'd be able to um, further adjust that analysis timing that we set at the beginning there. If we wanted to change any of that, uh, we would do that right here. Um, here's some other parameters and everything down here that you'd be able to adjust. Uh, for our purposes right now, we'll leave all that alone. And we have our uh, 20,000 square foot property created. So the next thing we're gonna do now is uh, create the rent roll. Um, that's usually the first step I take when creating a new property. Um, that'll be something that'll be provided to you by uh, the landlord if you're on the brokerage side, uh, getting ready to list a property. Um, on that rent roll, you'll have uh, usually in place rent, um, any rent escalations that are uh, scheduled for the future, um, some other details, including um, the size of each tenant suite and any vacancies at the property. Um, so to go ahead and start entering tenants into the property, um, we're going to go here and we're going to click the tenant tab. And the default tab selected is the rent roll tab. That's the one that we want to uh, start working in. So to move this space down here where we'll be doing our work um, up, up to the top here and gain a little bit more clarity, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, unselect the reports tab. Um, that is all this information up here at the top. Um, so all we want to see right now is our inputs selection. So we're going to deselect this. Um, and now we've got a little bit more room to work with. Um, so to go ahead and enter our first tenant um, here in the rent roll tab, uh, we're going to click add record. And for simplicity's sake right now, we're just going to make this a one tenant property. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and add that one tenant uh, here right now. So um, first we'll select the name of the tenant. Um, we'll call it Mike's Cell Phone Repair. Okay. Um, and then from there, we pretty much just keep working our way down this row here. Um, each one of these rows that is added represents a new tenant, um, and there's a number of different dialog boxes there where you'll be able to fill out more details about that tenant. Um, so the next one really that we'll need to fill out here is the size of the tenant suite. Um, or pardon me, we'll go ahead and fill out uh, the suite here first. So they're in suite one. Okay, um, the size of the tenant suite will say they occupy the entire building. Um, so 20,000 square feet from there. Um, we'll select the start date of the lease. Um, right now, this is set up so that it would just be starting um, the first day of the analysis. Uh, usually on a rent roll that's going to be provided to you, you'll have that start date. Um, it's always good practice to enter the actual start date of when that tenant's lease started, um, just so you have it for record. Uh, so we'll say that is uh, January 1st, 2013. That's when they started. Okay. 
And then, um, well, this is the term right here, the, the length of the lease term. Um, right now it's giving me a notification that since I only have this set as a five year term, um, that this tenant would be expiring before the analysis start date. So we're gonna change that to 10 years. Um, the way this is set up here, how I have 10 slash zero, um, that means 10 years and zero months. So if you wanted to add, uh, if it wasn't a, a clean year and you had a partial years in there, uh, you'll go ahead and add just the amount of months uh, that would be over that full year there. Um, for our purposes right now, we'll just leave that at 10 years. So you'll see here that the lease expiration for my cell phone repair uh, for this lease is going to be December 31st, 2022. Okay, that's good. Moving along here. Um, the next spot we have here is uh, base rent. Um, and so we'll be able to add that here. Um, we'll say Mike is paying $22 in base rent right now. Um, what we can do here um, is, and what's very common in office, industrial and retail leases are uh, rent escalations. Um, and so the way that you would add those is clicking on this ellipsis right here. You can go in and uh, adjust rent per year. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll add two escalations to this lease. So to do so, we're gonna click on the, uh, the, the rent row right here. We're gonna add two records. Okay, so um, we'll say in 2017, See, I'm adjusting the date right here. 2017, this rent is gonna go to 2250. And in 2018, we'll say it goes to $23 per square foot. Um, that's a pretty common uh, 50 cent rental increase. Um, that's usually just used to uh, match with inflation. Um, so that's what we'll have for right now. So we'll go up here to close and we've got the rental rate entered in. We'll keep moving down the row here. Free rent is, this is where you would uh, add in free rent. Um, that's typically used if there's a vacancy at the property. Um, we'll go over that uh, in a video to come um, and how uh, vacancy on your rent roll um, is modeled in Argus. So we'll leave that for right now because this tenant is not gonna have any free rent occurring during our hold. So we'll keep moving. This is where you'll be able to enter the tenant's uh, recovery structure. Um, right now it is set as a default to net. Um, and when Argus says net, that is a true triple net uh, expense recovery. So all of the expenses that you enter into the operating expenses section um, will be reimbursed by this tenant uh, via their pro rata share. So they're, um, in this case, 100% of the property, so they will be picking up 100% of the operating expenses. Obviously, if there's more tenants at the property, those are equally divided uh, based on each tenant's square footage and total share of the property. So right now we'll just leave that for as a uh, as a triple net. Um, in a video to come, we will go a little bit deeper into uh, how different recovery structures are modeled within Argus. Um, so here's where you're gonna be able to put in leasing costs. Again, this is gonna be something that's more applicable if there's a vacancy of the property that you'll have leasing up during the hold period. Um, this is where you will model uh, tenant improvement costs. Um, and those are usually done as a, uh, a price per square foot. Um, we'll go, we'll do, we'll do that uh, in another video um, when we're showing a vacancy leasing. Um, but this is where that'll be added in. Uh, again, there's going to be um, commissions that will be added right here as well. Um, we'll do that in the video showing a vacancy lease up. 
Um, and that is pretty much it in terms of adding a new tenant. Um, so right now the property has one tenant and that's paying at $22 triple net um, starting right now that escalates uh, 50 cents per year um, in 2017 and 2018. Um, so that is how you add a new tenant in Argus. Uh, like I said, in uh, some more videos to come, we'll go a little bit more in depth into uh, building out this rent roll a little bit more and the other inputs uh, within Argus. So be sure to check those videos out um, as they will be uh, equally as helpful. Thank you.